Hey guys, this is Nick. Welcome to Dark Spotting. This was an interesting week for horror fans. Nothing earth shattering has happened, but cool trailers for highly anticipated movies were released and exciting news were scattered across the biggest outlets dealing with our beloved genre. We begin with the first trailer for Joker Folia 2, the upcoming sequel to the uber successful Joker from 2019. The trailer is visually striking. The chemistry between Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga is palpable, and the overall impression is that this film will be able to recapture the engrossing and gut-wrenching blend of nihilism and psychological discomfort that made it scarier than many straight-out horror features. Joker Folia Do were released in theaters on October 4, 2024, and is rated R for strong violence, language, sexuality and brief full nudity. Definitely a movie to keep an eye on and to enjoy in a movie theater. Another very exciting trailer released a couple days ago is that of Maxine, the final installment for the X trilogy concocted by T. West, the author behind some of the most atmospheric horror movies I've ever seen, The House of the Devil and The Innkeepers. I must be honest with you, I haven't yet caught up with the first two installments, but the tantalizing 80s vibe in the trailer, the new retrowave cover of Laura Branigan's self-control, the acting skills of Mia Goth, the star-studded cast and the tension this trailer manages to rack up in a little more than two minutes are enough to make me wanna atone for my sin and watch X and Pearl right away. And to hype me up for this third installment, Maxine releases in US theaters on July 5, 2024, and that date can get here soon enough. Moving on to the news, we have a couple of enticing pieces of horror intelligence. Number one, the confirmation that a new Blair Witch movie is in development and that Lionsgate has partnered up with Blumhouse for this project. This piece of info is reason for cautious optimism, given that I am very fond of the original 1999 film and I still hope it can be successfully revived, and that Blumhouse roots and ascent to a household name lie in the found footage horror. I really hope they will be able to recreate the same level of dread that made the viewing of the original film one of my most cherished horror memories. A somewhat less prominent but still welcome piece of news is that of another franchise being brought back to life, and I'm talking about none other than the Scary Movie franchise. I know, I know, not exactly a pinnacle of horror cinematic artistry, but I must confess I still get back to the first two when I feel like a bit of crass humor and mindless fun, and I still think Anna Ferris and Regina Hall together were pure comedic gold. Anyway, according to the news bouncing around the web, Paramount and Miramax are partnering up for a full reboot of the series. It goes without saying that the genre has amassed a great amount of material to parody on since the last forgettable installment of the series was released in 2013, and I hope they can shed a bit of political correctness and deliver a boatload of laugh-out-loud crude comedy for this one. In another piece of news released today, we learned that veteran actor Daniel Roebuck has joined the cast of Terrifier 3 as Santa Claus. Boy, do I feel anxiety and sorrow for his character already. The last noteworthy info is that horror maestro Guillermo del Toro has publicly loaded on his X account a little known found footage flick from 2013, The Borderlands. I quote, a truly unique film, erudite and absorbing, it captures the energies of James, Blackwood and Machen and resolves them in a powerful 21st century way, an unknown gem. He is referring to immortal British writers Montag Rhodes James, Algernon Blackwood and Arthur Machen and such a commendation coming from him should be enough reason for you to dig this film out of obscurity. As for my humble opinion, I saw it not long after its release and I can confirm that it's a truly outstanding found footage horror, one of the few that are capable to elevate this subgenre to great heights. I thoroughly recommend it to anyone who can forego action and gore for psychological horror and a fantastic payoff. If by any chance the borderlines is not enough to sate your thirst for religious horror, I recommend watching my review of The Devil's Doorway. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.